Welcome to RV Talk Radio. Here we talk about RV living, RV lifestyles, and RV travel. We also celebrate the RV lifestyle that gives us the chance to do outdoor activities that we couldn't do in a normal lifestyle. So thanks for joining us. Grab yourself a cup of coffee, a cup of tea, and let's talk about RVs. Well, hello everyone. My name is Rob Scribner and I'm the host of RV Talk Radio. And this is episode 117, 117. And welcome. It's been a, <clears throat> a little while since I've done a show and uh, a lot of things going on and stuff. But, you know, uh, nothing calls me out more to do a radio show than to hear a bunch of <laughs> RV shows. <laughs> whatever you want to call them. And all I can say is I have never seen so much damn whining in my life. <laughs> you know, it's just, uh, I think the last video I just listened to was Dan and Jen. And, uh, uh, you know, they, they say, do you want to keep it real and stuff? If you want to keep it real, buy a house. <laughs> I'm just like, you know, really, you know, I've never seen so much whining and, and every channel's doing it. Um, either they too many flies around or they've got um, someone parked too close to them and all that stuff. And if you want to be happy, buy a house. <laughs> and and uh, I think Dan and Jen were saying, oh, they'd love Mesa. Oh, guess what? I am in Mesa. I love it. And uh uh, yes, I love RVing and stuff, but I do love a base. I just, you know, because if you hear all the things like someone parked too close to me or someone uh, they're too loud all night or we're parked too close to one another or I don't like this city and this city's better than the other. Now, uh, you know, those are true statements and stuff. And uh, uh, occasionally they might even, you know, uh, do videos of showing you how nice and pretty he is around the places they went to. <laughs> That's what I thought the shows were about, but I think they don't get as many clicks, uh, many views, unless there's some kind of distress going on in their shows. So, uh, uh, yeah, and 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 I've done that too. I've had shows where I'm kind of like, uh, it's a disaster, and you know we had a flat tire or something. And uh, sure in heck, those videos get a lot more clicks and a lot more views. And that's what these RV channels are doing. But, uh, oh, man, it's just uh, uh, insane. I have uh, I try not to say the names of the videos too much, but there's a new couple out there um, that I think they're, I would call them, they just got into the RV thing. I think their channel's really new. And uh, they are i think professional ranters i'm pretty sure of it and you, you watch their videos and all you want to do is slap them <laughs> it's like i'm just yelling at the screen if you don't like it or you're going to complain go buy a house uh, there's a lot of things nice about a house like you want to hear about having a house it's great you can have stuff you can have privacy. You can do things like set up a studio and do podcasting. You can have a special backyard with a swimming pool or whatever you want. You can have pets. There's, um, the thing is about RVing is everybody's, oh, the freedom and stuff like that. So you own an RV, but as soon as you walk outside that door, you own nothing, nothing at all. The view is not yours. The ground you step on is not yours. The picnic table is not yours. The sh um, facilities and stuff, you're renting. Nothing is yours except that damn RV you got. Is that what you want? To own nothing? To have nothing that's yours except an RV? Just saying. <laughs> It's like, what the hell, what the hell's up with you, Rob? <laughs> I don't know. It's just like, I keep hearing people saying how terrible RVing is. Well, you know, I've been out there too. I've been amongst all the same problems. Um, it wasn't that long ago. 
And uh, I still love RVing, but it almost at a limit because it can get under your skin. Uh, the get up and move, get up and move, and take down, uh, set up the, the whole things, and then stupid things breaking, which, you know, it happens in a house too. But Lord, <laughs> um, it's been terrible. Uh, there's one guy that lives in kind of like a camper pickup truck thing and every one of his things is like talking about the dangers of boondocking and the weird people and he can't even get places to stay and boondock in Florida and stuff like that and it's like uh, um, and, but he's really at least super realist saying you know you may not want to come out here <laughs> and and then they're complaining about uh you know, uh, trying to make reservations and stuff like that. And it's like, uh, yeah, well, it was because it's getting more popular. And uh, people are looking for shortcuts in life. That's what bothers me. Uh, I, I don't, you know, uh, not some of them, they're hard workers and stuff like that. And um, But literally, it's like, oh, I worked so hard today. I put three hours in a video editing oh poor baby try eight hours <laughs> nine to five and, and, and a bigger paycheck and maybe uh, pay taxes and and um uh, get health insurance and go buy a house <laughs> get a real job you know i always worry about these young people they're out there and it's like uh boy that must look really great on the resume well what'd you do in your 20s well we boondocked a lot and i made websites Oh, I made videos. It's like, yeah, great, boy. I, you're the first one I want to hire. <laughs> Not. <laughs> anyway, uh, but uh, there, I do have some other news uh, about our RV and what we're going to be doing. And uh, kind of excited. And uh, let me uh, change this to a, a new module here. Well, one of the things I wanted to make sure to let you know is Sherry and I have never been entitled RVers. What I mean by that is if you listen to these vlogs and these RV channels and stuff, they act like people need to walk around them. And uh, it's just not going to happen. It's like, well, I'm going to make a list of what good etiquette is for boondocking. Uh Gee, who made you go RV God? <laughs> so anyway, I would suggest if you're going RVing is you need to be tolerant. And it's like, it sounds like some of this crap that's going on in politics and schools and all that stuff where everybody uh, wants to be segregated from one another. The RVers are doing it too. It's like, well... If you're going to have an RV and you're going to boondock, you should do this. You need to park so far away. You shouldn't be in our shadow or you shouldn't uh, have your windshield pointing one direction and and uh, so on and so on. And uh, it's like, here it comes. <laughs> RV socialism. <laughs> it's it's going to happen. You know it's going to happen. You know it's going to happen. <laughs> They're doing it and everything else. Why not RVing? So, yeah. Uh, but anyway, so uh, the news for me and Sherry is, is uh, I just made a video. <clears throat> a very sad thing has happened here. We sold our boat. <laughs> <laughs> so I've had two, the greatest things in my life. One was when I bought my boat. The second greatest thing in the whole world is when you sell your boat. So anyway, no, we're just getting to a point where we have too many toys really hard to maintain everything and uh uh you know the closer we get into our 60s we're not there yet um the more you start thinking about okay we got to get our finances set in a way that we can uh, live a quality life and still uh, uh, get our socialist income of <laughs> social security <laughs> uh, but we we're actually doing much more than that obviously you guys do know I own Ranger Rob Pet Poopy Bags. And so with that my, uh, thought in mind, let me do my quick commercial here. You truly love and care about your dog. Provide them with quality poopy bags. Strong, reliable, scented, and eco-friendly. 
take care of your dog, take care of the environment, take care of the world. Ranger Rob Poopy Bags, available at Amazon. So try developing your own product from your RV <laughs> and store 1,500 poopy bags in your back room. <laughs> that ain't going to happen. <laughs> Another benefit of owning a house, just saying. So one of the things that Sherry and I were talking about is, you know, uh, as we get in our 60s, we'll be falling back in Social Security and our pension. And the other reason we started uh, Ranger Rob Poopy Bags was another supplemental income to uh, allow us to live the lifestyle that we're used to, uh, even though we're not in the workforce anymore. And we'll have uh, Medicare and supplemental insurance at that time. And um, we want, don't want that to be an anchor where we can't do things. But the big news is, you know, we sold the boat. And so our RV has been stored up at Central Oregon, and we use it as we check Sherry's folks as they're getting kind of up in age. But now that the boat's gone, the side of the house is open, and we have room to, to put that uh, our RV in the side of the house, which we're thrilled to death about. And it's a great opportunity because the worst thing, and I've said this over and over and over and over and over again, the worst thing for a boat and the worst thing for an RV is not using them. I swear, when you don't use them, they break. They just break because they're mad at you. I don't care what it is. But uh, uh, yeah, so we're, uh, we've are we had that up there for a while. And uh, so we need to get it down here in which, you know, uh, uh, we'd like to get our carpets cleaned. And, and there's uh, some new furniture and stuff I'd kind of like to redo in, the, in there that I've always wanted to. But our, our fifth wheel is a beautiful uh, 2013 Montana. Um, uh, 3625 and it's got the uh, RE which is the entertainment system in the rear or the back and uh, we really like it and uh, but it needs some love and so we thought we'd uh, bring it home and uh, give it some love and we'll do some videos and some of the things we'll do to uh, spruce it up and uh, then we'd like to do some more uh, weekend warrior kind of stuff ours will be a little bit more than just weekends um, we're interested in Havasu, we're interested in Laughlin area, um, we're interested in um, uh, Sedona, and we can hit those places when the, the snowbirds have gone home and stuff, and we wouldn't mind it at all. <clears throat> uh, but Arizona is just full of great places to go, and uh, we can do it when we want to, um, and uh, we're not driven by seasons and stuff like that. So we're looking forward to that, kind of getting the mode of, uh, so we can get our RV stories more personal again, other than having to sit in the sidelines watching all these whiners. And that's really what it's been. It's been like a whole showcase of whiners. And if they're not whining, then they're telling you how wonderful it is. And by the way, sign up for our membership and we made videos just for you, even though those videos are just like everybody else's and you don't have to pay for them. So people, I know you may love certain RV groups, but really you have to sign up for the membership to hear something that you can get for free. Um, and it sounds charming. They're nice people and all that stuff, but they're using you to provide their lifestyle that they really need to go get real jobs. <laughs> I'm sorry, but it's this guys. Um, I know these people, some of them are charming, they're nice, they're fun, you really think they're sweet and stuff, and it's great, but in some cases, they're really stupid. I mean, <laughs> um, they really need to get their lives together. What they're doing is, this is my shortcut to life, and by the way, can you fund it? <laughs> That's really what you're doing. I'm just saying. Um, I know. You don't want to hear reality. You want to hear the peaches and cream of RVing. And, uh, and it is, I, well, obviously me and Sherry are still doing it. We love it. We love our fifth wheel. Uh, we may have got rid of our boat. Our fifth wheel ain't going nowhere. Um, unless we change it up to a different kind of RV. Uh, but no, we're underwater on it. Just like most people get when they buy a new RV, they just sink so quick in uh, investment ways that you can trade up about once. And then pretty soon it's like, you're, uh, you're, uh, underwater really bad and so we're kind of that way with our rv until uh we get a few more years under our belt we can actually get it um financed to a part where we could actually sell it for whatever we owe on it 
but we'll lose thirty, forty thousand dollars easy. RVs are terrible investments. And there's another video, folks, that are out there, a uh, uh, fairly new channel, and they're uh, bitching about um, some guy Ramsey do uh, that does financial suggestions and really bad mouth the fact that invest RVs are a bad investment, and they are. And then it's like his argument, well, yeah, but it takes us to a lifestyle. What, it's uh, How can you put a value on uh, the things and places we've gone? Uh, well, you can. I mean, there's, you can put a value on it. Um, the bottom line, the guy was telling the truth in a financial aspect of it. And so why would you get upset with a guy that is um, uh, talking about finances? Is it a good investment? Uh, you know, what's a good investment? Stocks, ha houses, RVs, boats. The guy will tell you the truth. <laughs> That's what he's doing. So back off. He's like, he's right. RVs are a terrible, terrible investment. And that's okay if, if you enjoy what you're getting out of your RV. But if you think the RVs are a good investment, somehow it's going to work into that portfolio, ain't going to happen unless maybe you bought a junker and you really built it from scratch. You might make a, a thousand or two extra off of it. That would be a miracle. I mean, we're talking miracles here for sure. I can tell you one thing that I've noticed since we've owned a house and our and then we RV when we want to, is uh, life is much more down to earth um, because you're jaunting around so much on your RV and stuff. If you have family, you're really neglecting them. Um, it's like, uh, oh yeah, well, we every year we go visit one of our kids. Uh, I see my kids now. I didn't see them before every two to three weeks and uh, we're doing picnics together or kids would come home and use our swimming pool. Uh, is there any RVers out there that have swimming pools in their uh, RV? I'm just curious. Um, anyway, my point being having a home has its benefits, uh, especially if you're around some of your family and, and, and set it up where the family can come visit you and have a comfortable place to stay. Um, Instead of that hide a bed you blow up in your RV and uh, that's very uncomfortable and only two people can fit luck if they're lucky. And of course, uh, if they don't fold up the bed, it's in the way of everything. Um, yeah. <laughs> so yeah, uh, if you wanted recommendations for me as an RVer, I would say as a young couple, get a job. <laughs> Just saying. Get a career. You can get an RV and be a weekend warrior and take longer weekends and stuff. And uh, uh, find a way to, uh, uh, it depends on how much time you got. You may not want to buy a, a used one. You may not have the time to be working every weekend trying to refurbish an RV. You may want to buy a new one and, hey, uh, doing it in a young life, um, maintain it and keep it in good shape for a long time it would be paid off at a time that maybe you might want to do some full timing for a while but get a job buy a house and so who's out there saying hey the homeowner's lifestyle is wonderful you keep hearing about this rv living traveling freedom is getting wonderful but it's getting crowded and it's still fun and it's enjoyable and yes, some RV parks suck and others are expensive and so is life. I keep hearing like I watched two, two uh, uh, Freedom Theory and I watched uh, uh, Dan and Jen go to Vegas staying at the cheap ass um, thousand trails that's up there because they can get a good price. And then they just kind of mention how miserable it is and airplanes going over the top and they're a tight quarters. It was like, you can fix that. Go over to Oasis. It's a five-star resort. Yeah, it's going to cost you $40, $50 a day. But it's beautiful. It's gorgeous. And they've got luscious pools. And they've got a wonderful, gigantic place. And it's, it's professional. And it's airplanes are not flying straight over it. And you're on the strip. Uh, down the roadways 
which is so convenient and it's gorgeous. Yes, it will cost more money. But if you had a job, <laughs> you, could, uh, you could go there. And then if you go there more than a few times, they give you a 20% discount or something like that. We've been getting a discount like that for years and we hardly go there anymore. But we used to go a lot. In fact, we lived in uh, the Oasis for six months back in 2006, seven, something like that. Anyway, and it, it was great. It was about, I think we we're paying about 800 a month to stay there monthly. And it was wonderful. We met some great people. Um, but... Um, Vegas is a town that really isn't designed to sit back, kick back in your uh, uh, lawn chair and build a fire and enjoy yourself. L Las Vegas has got its own character. It's, uh, it's a big people's playground. <laughs> we'll put it that way. And so if you're going to Vegas, go enjoy Vegas. Um, if you need to go see like the Red Rocks and things like that, go stay over by Lake Mead. You can boondock in the dust if you want. And, uh, be, you know, you know if, if that's what you want. But if you're coming to town, uh, that's a, it's a, <laughs> it's a layover. If you want some pampering, then you go to a five-star RV resort like the Oasis. Just saying. So you don't have any room to complain about those old R, uh, RV parks over by Sam's Town and stuff like that. They've been around forever, but most people are going there to go enjoy Vegas. Like uh, over at Sam's Town, I think it's called. They have an RV park. Those people are gambling and enjoying the nightlife and enjoying the fact it's Vegas. And, uh, and so they're accommodations are secondary to them. Just like when I go to Vegas now and get a motel, I get a good price on a good motel uh, that's comfortable and convenient in the Strip. Um, and uh, I, I, we don't spend much time in a room, so why spend money on a big fancy room? Uh, no, give me a clean, give me convenient, but and then I'll get me a good deal. <laughs> And, and I have no room to complain. Uh, if I want to complain about my room, then I'll get a five-star room. Then I have I, then you can complain. So if you want to go to Oasis but pay premium, uh, you can complain there because they really, you know, they're a four- to five-star resort, and uh, they need to uh, uh, act like it all the time. And so, but Thousand Trails, Sam's Town, no, you don't have the right to complain about those places. <sighs> no, you just stay in them overnight if that's what you're doing. If you're passing through, just be happy you found a place that wasn't full and uh, be on your way. Uh, if you're staying there to enjoy the city and it's a dump, uh, that's your fault. So I, I wanted to pass on some information I learned about um, well, something you could do for your RV that if you're storing your RV at all, whether it's in a storage area or inside of your house, uh, like ours is up in Central Oregon, no matter how hard I try, it seems like there's a mouse that gets in. And so uh, they're just sneaky little buggers. You can try to seal every hole in that RV and they still find a way in. Luckily, we never have any food exposure and all that stuff. We just know there's been one in there and it doesn't become too big of a problem. So after doing some research of like, what could you do in your RV that would really deter the mice or rodents having an interest of trying to get in? And so uh, one of the things is that uh, there was actually documented video of showing how well this works is good old fashioned, and I'm sure you've heard of it, but really didn't think about doing it in your RV, mint. Yeah, mint. Uh, they despise it. I mean, they did like, and, and the tests they did was like the ones we've watched is they use, you know, you know, if you have a barn, and I, I used to have a farm, uh, you always got mice in those things. So if you ever want to do a mouse test, you just put something that's uh, has food in it, and uh, you'll your guaranteed mice. Anyway, so what they did is they set up a, a box that was white and they put a, a camera on top of it and put food in it and then monitored it for the evening so they could see 
just how many mice come in. And they had a couple dozen mice come in and out of the box and getting free food. So then they put that same free food, same box, no difference, um, and put mint in it. And those mice literally would not go into the box. They just, they just don't like mint. So what I'm going to do this year, uh, I'm not doing it now. I want to get, as soon as I get up to the RV, and whenever it's just sitting anywhere, I'm going to put mint in the weirdest places in that RV that might uh, have a mouse come through or something. And uh, just plant uh, mint all over your RV and just make that RV just sour to them. And uh, what a cheap way to take care of your RV and keep the critters out. Uh, so anyway, if you haven't heard that before, there's an idea for you, especially if you're one of those snowbirds that go home and uh, to a house like us and uh, uh, store the RV off to the side for a while. Then there's the uh, uh, sunbirds too, the ones from here that go up north and have their RVs stored up like in Anacortes and places like that and then live up in the northwest for the summer or for a couple of months and then come back down here, which is something me and Shiru may do in the future. Uh, anyway, once again, they store their RVs up there for several months, um, and that's the time you'd want to put the mint into your RV. I mean, in the cupboards, in the back, underneath the entertainment system, uh, any particular cupboard, under the sink, all that stuff. Put mint in there. Those little critters hate that stuff. I mean, they proved it. They just don't like mint. Is it foolproof? Uh, I don't know about that, but... I definitely like the results of what I saw. So uh, if you do have an RV and you're storing it, get yourself some mint. Ford's RV Refrigeration Training Center, a licensed school, has many objectives for only one product, the RV refrigerator. We educate others so they can provide a repair service in their area, repair their own refrigerator, or when they hear throw it away, buy a new one, They'll know the right questions to ask in order to know whether or not their technician has been properly educated. Since 1984, we have saved RV owners money, provided them the best warranty, and reduced our carbon footprint. We accomplish these objectives daily through our service and training programs. Military veterans can even use their GI Bill for our training program, which includes our customized tools and manuals. Visit RVRefrigeration.com to find free DIY repair videos and information on our service and training programs. As a thanks to Rob Scribner, we're offering his listeners a free 11-point RV refrigerator inspection and one free night of camping at our location in Benton, Kentucky. Go to RVRefrigeration.com to call and make an appointment. That's RVRefrigeration.com. Thanks for listening. Stay cool and GBYAY. So there you go. Uh, Ford RV Refrigeration, they're a great bunch. I've uh, talked to them before. I've seen their ver videos. They've been very helpful. They've got a great platform. And if you're looking for a job in the RV industry, uh, that's a great place to get certified for refrigeration. So do it to it, guys. If you want to stay out there and uh, work part-time, um, there's a way, great uh, thing to do. But you got to invest some money into yourself and uh, get certified. So uh, um, one of the other things I wanted to talk about was a new channel that I started, and um, it has to do with cooking. So if you enjoy cooking and you're an RVer, and the reason I'm bringing it up for this show is uh, cooking, I, I did a lot of cooking in the RV, and I really enjoyed it. And so I've created a new cooking channel, and so I, I'm going to stop putting... Uh, cooking on outdoor travel channel because i have so darn many of them and i've got new ones i'm making uh, i created a new channel called cooking with ranger rob so it's got a twitter account it's got a facebook it's got a youtube channel and its own website cooking with ranger rob and uh if you're wondering that nickname came to me a bunch of my friends back in the Years ago when we were fishing and we just used CB radios and stuff. Anyway, they nicknamed me Ranger Rob because I was always the per first person to say, let's go salmon fishing and all that. Anyway, it kind of stuck. And so many, many years ago, I bought RangerRob.com as a fun little uh, uh, website. I still got to change it back over to. Uh, and then I created some products. Um, I wanted the name to kind of stick out there for a while. So I actually 
uh, trademarked uh, the word Ranger Rob. I actually own it. Um, well, my company does. And uh, uh, so Ranger Rob is a trademark for uh, pet uh, waste bags, which obviously you heard of the uh, Ranger Rob pet poopy bags. And uh, so, uh, and also I, I can kind of control the media out there of how they, people use the name Ranger Rob because I've seen other guys trying to do the same thing, um, not as a product, but just as a nickname. And uh, so I can kind of, now that I own the trademark, I can stomp on them. <laughs> That's why you buy trademarks, people. Just like I own the trademark to RV Travel Buddy. And I've had to slap a few people's hands for that one. I have the right to. I own it. I paid for that. Uh, there was lawyers involved and and the uh, whole works. So trademarking, uh, if you don't want somebody using your name, trademark it. Then you got power. And so... Uh, um, yeah, it costs about $500 to do a trademark if you're curious. But if you, you're doing something that's uh, a business oriented type of thing uh, uh, and you want to protect your name, that's the way to do it. And so you got to cough up the funds. It's like when you own a business, it's like, ah, uh, there's things you don't want to spend on money on, like liability insurance or things like that, advertising stuff. It's like, you got to have to do it. And uh, yeah, the old saying, it takes money to make money is a very true statement. Which brings me to the conversation of maybe you should cook more. Uh, one of the things I keep hearing with RVers is uh, when they're trying to do budgeting and they tell people how much they spend every time is uh, the ones that really keep their costs down, yes, they're cooking at home and uh, or in the RV. And some are living off instant pizza. And it's like, guys, you gotta, you gotta quit doing that. Um, one is, uh, uh, you, you need to balance your. I mean, whether you're heavy set or not, you still need to eat balanced food. And uh, so, getting healthier food is just good, even if it, you're not losing weight from it. Learning to cook at home and making things convenient, finding ways to uh, make a. a, a something that you've always enjoyed or maybe you want to make a stir fry and it's like oh, I don't want to cut up all the veggies and stuff well you can go to places and get them all cut up for you and they're not that expensive you can really make it convenient and if you're boondocking apparently you'll have a lot of time in your hands cut up vegetables while you're sitting out there in the desert <laughs> if you're not sitting in your lawn chair looking out to the desert uh, then get in your RV and start cutting up some veggies <laughs> and uh, start cooking and that's what cooking with Ranger Rob was all about so it's trying to show people an old fart like myself can cook you know and my wife still works and and we were doing that and said so, oh that's terrible Rob you're you're sitting around playing around and doing podcasts while your wife works and it's like uh no I'm doing a lot more than you think plus I own a company um but uh the least thing I could do is start cooking because my wife works every day. That's where we get our insurance. And, uh, you know, taking care of the house and stuff. Where if it was an RV, take care of the RV. But the least thing you do is cook damn dinner. And uh, if you really uh, start getting into it, it's fun. And then it's like, you know, how many people sit around and go, Yeah, my mom used to make the best cabbage rolls in the world. And uh, I haven't had one ever since. Then make them. Make your own. Or uh, me was like a lasagna. I just made a lasagna the other day. It was so good. Oh my goodness. And uh, if there's other another cooking channel, I would re recommend that you watch. Because he does a lot of grilling. Um, and I don't know many, many RVers that don't have a grill with them. Uh, it's called um, SamTheCookingGuy.com. Yep, Sam thecookingguy.com does three videos a week he definitely inspires me and then i'll make some things close to what he sh um, made a recipe for and i may modify them a little bit for me and sherry he tends to like things a little hotter um, um i'm starting to like hot more but anyway uh, uh if you're not watching uh cooking with ranger rob you should be watching sam the cooking guy that's a great show to get inspired to start cooking again and he does his show in such a way that his goal is the same as mine, is get people cooking again. 
and not only cooking but sitting at the dining room table, that's my little beef, sit at the table, turn off think the distractions, and talk. Just talk. Oh my gosh, how shocking is that? No, put the phone away from the dinner table and talk and then laugh and then discuss things and throw food at each other if you have to. But um, don't throw the food that I just taught you to cook. Because <laughs> anyway, So anyway, I made a lasagna the other day was to die for. Then I always wanted to know how to make a, a, a chicken fried uh, steak. Oh my God, I got a recipe, it was so good, and it was not that hard, it was the best ever, and I put a fried egg on top of it too, oh, my gravy was to die for. I learned how to make a meatloaf, I'm making, believe it or not, I've just learned how, and I have a video coming out and cooking uh, with Ranger Rob, of uh, um, pickled eggs. I have never had one of those. I'm 58 years old. I've never had a pickled egg. So I, I searched and searched and searched, and I saw a very interesting uh, recipe to make some. So I made a small batch. I haven't tried them yet. I'm trying to let them sit for a week or two to let the flavors get in. But it's got turmeric in it, uh, along with some other great spice, spices and, of course, garlic. And I'm looking forward to that. But um, anyway, it's becoming fun. That's my point. Instead of eating out, which will kill your budget, every time you cook at home, before you eat, you go, I just saved us $30. I just saved us about $20. I just, uh, we cooked, we ate breakfast at the RV. I just saved us $26. It depends on what you're getting and eating. Uh, Plus tips. Gone. They're gone. Yes, there's expenses in buying your old food and stuff, but... Uh, to live out of these uh, lean cuisines all the time uh, it is just can't be good for you. I mean, it's just they're they're lean preservatives. <laughs> That's really get some good food and and uh, don't get hung up on losing weight. This isn't talking about eating uh, losing weight and stuff, but eating a little more healthy, more balanced food. That's always good for everybody, and it tends to make your health. Maybe make you, if you're a person that gets sick a lot and stuff like that, try changing your diet to more balanced meals. Don't worry about the weight thing yet. Just get your body used to some uh, really foods that really will impact your health. Because you take all those supplements and stuff like that, and they say a lot of them don't even um, break down enough to go into your system as well as eating real spinach or eating real broccoli. The benefits from those kind of foods. Um, learn to cook, guys. You're in an RV. You got the time, apparently. You got more time than I got. Start cooking. And if one of you are, uh, has a job and they're working out of the RV, the other person, they can cook. <laughs> Try it. Uh, get on the internet. Watch YouTube. Uh, find Sam the Cooking Guy or go to my uh, Ranger Rob, Cooking with Ranger Rob. We got some great recipes in there. Try them. They're so yummy. Yes, cook people well getting back to the observations I've had lately watching uh, some of the channels I've been watching one is especially over time if you watch some channels like I watch Freedom Theory or I watch uh, um, Jan and Dan and Jan and then there's some other ones I can't remember all their names even uh, Long Long Honeymoon and all that stuff if I, all I can say was when I'm watching these people is they look stressed. Um, and the longer that they've been out there, the more stressed they look. And yet they say, oh, it's so nice and uh, uh, comfortable out here and freedom and, and stay where we want, move when we want. Um, the real thing is, and, and if you really pay attention to this thing, is they're stressed out all the time. Something's broke. We got to leave tomorrow. Uh, we're going up to another place. Go, go, go. Uh, and then, like, Freedom Theory, they got a baby involved there, too. So now there's a whole nother set of stresses. It's like, don't you see yourselves? Look. Watch your own videos. There's baggy eyes. There's tiresome. There's people aging faster than normal. Um, and then one of the shows, actually, somebody says, <laughs> actually, uh, the one guy that does just a, he's in a little camper. 
he says the this lifestyle will actually uh, is not that healthy sometimes you're always stressed you're always living in tight quarters always you can't just sit down you got to sit down move something and sit down or uh, go to bed and you may have to assemble something you want to work on your workstation. You got to pull out a certain kind of these is all these processes. And you, I can tell you right now in a house, I have a room that I go into. It's already set up. Uh, I have a studio that's already set up. I don't have to disassemble it. I used back in the day when I was doing some green screen work in an RV, I would put a green screen across one of the slides um, with Velcro. And then set up my lights and the whole thing. You could move in the RV uh, while I was doing a recording. And I have to do them all before Sherry got back from whatever she was doing. Um, it was a nightmare. And it was like, oh, I have to, to try to stay enthusiastic to do a, a video with a, a green screen in the background was definitely um, tough. And even to do the RV talk radio when I was on the road, um, I'd have to, you know, set up some of the equipment. You can't leave that stuff on the table. I'd pull out the mixer. I'd have to pull out the laptop and my uh, speakers, things. I could keep some of it still on the table. And at the same time, that was also our dining room table. Was not convenient. In fact, kind of stressful. And so uh, when I really think back, um, when we were full-timing, there was always something you had to do that because uh, of the unit between you know flushing tanks, worrying about water supply, worrying about space in the refrigerator because they're so small, um, you couldn't just sit down. Sometimes you'd have to assemble something, or if there was a project or, or a hobby you wanted to work on, there's there's a con there's kind of a stress. And yes, there is another kind of stress of owning too many things like. Uh, they say uh, becoming a minimalist is a good way to go to become less stressful. But um, there's also a point when it gets too, you know, too far into that. Uh, like the boat I owned, it was even though we weren't using it, it was always a stress, a worry. It's like, damn, we're not using the boat enough. It's sitting in the sun rotting, and you worry about it. Or you may have stuff in storage that's in another state. And you worry about it. It's like, ah, oh, that stuff's sitting in the box. It's just up there. We're paying $80 a month or whatever it is. The store of stuff, it's a stress. And, uh, I mean, every kind of thing you do, owning a house is a stress. Uh, <clears throat> the garbage disposal goes out. you got to change the water in the pool, like the videos that are coming out this week on that. Um, you know, um <laughs> I haven't had a lot of big things happen. Occasionally, maybe a, uh, a sink starts to leak, or you got a clog sink, or, or uh, something. Um, you know, there's there's the stresses too. But RVers, they have it 24/7. Nothing is easy. That's a big thing to remember as an RVer is nothing is easy. And uh, and remember, as soon as you step foot outside that door, you own nothing. Nothing is yours. You do not have a right to put a fence up. You do not have a right to tell the neighbors what to do unless they're breaking rules. Um, you don't have the right to say that RV next to us just took our sunshine away and we now are, you know, you can't do that. You own none of it. And your the rules involved are all the RV parks. In a house, yes, you do have some rules and ordinances you have to go by. But generally, if you want to put a garden in your backyard, you put a garden in your backyard. If you want to have a dog in your yard is fenced, you can have a dog. Um, in some cases, you want a chicken. <laughs> I think I could have a chicken if I wanted to. Um, I've had chickens before, and they're kind of fun. But anyway, uh, <laughs> um so if anything, I'm, I'm for once, I'm being an advocate for just the opposite. If you're stressed out and you think you want freedom, all that stuff, you really want freedom, get a house. Uh, freedom to do the things you want to and, and do the hobbies that you want to do and have the room to um, do extracurricular things like podcasting and stuff and have a permanent room uh, designed for it. 
um, or how, if you have children, they could have their own room and privacy and uh, uh, and a backyard and a dog and freedom to run around without a leash on in the backyard. Uh, yeah, grow your own food. Uh, there's a lot of benefits to owning a house, even renting a house. You get quite a few more benefits than you would have in an RV. The, the benefits of having a base in an RV, oh my gosh, then you really got a big book to go by. <laughs> Not only could you get away for a while and go travel, but then you can come back when it starts getting under your skin and get back to your base home. A lot of RVers do that. And those ones aren't usually making you, um, are not making videos, uh, but they are the majority. I would say easily 90 to 95% of the RVers out there, which is very crowded, are not, I repeat, are not making videos and having video channels. Those people generally are professionals that have really good jobs that can work virtually, or they're retired because they can and they have the time and they put in their time and they didn't skip the system, which a lot of people are trying to do. And they didn't go through life feeling entitled. They worked hard and they have the every right. They now have the time and a good investment and maybe bought their RV uh, five or 10 years before they retired and did everything right. Um, God bless them. <laughs> But to take a shortcut in life, like a lot of these people I'm trying to uh, see trying to do it, uh, they're struggling. And uh, you don't have to live poor all your life. There is some benefits. Uh, this is the United States, and you really can do things and have things that you can't imagine you have. But you, they're not given to you. They're hard work, and you have to earn them. Just like you start a job in a corporation, you're not going to start at the top. Um, I remember being that young and, oh, man, I thought I was, you know, uh, <laughs> you know. Anyway, so I I found out over time working hard and working, keeping my faith and dreams, I made it through the ranks and I did get into management in an aerospace company and, and become a teacher and uh, uh uh, aerospace, uh, electrical stuff, and, and uh, but never I had to go to schools. I learned fiber optics. It was hard, but the benefits after uh, ten years of or more was wonderful. <laughs> I'm so glad I did it. Um, but yeah, <laughs> I knew and I was taught right. You can't skip the system. Even now, you can't skip the system. And a four-year degree doesn't mean you skipped anything. It just means you have more credentials to do a different kind of job. But you still stop, stop, start at the bottom and work your way up. You don't instantly walk into a company and make a nasty amount of money. It just doesn't happen. <sighs> Grr. I get so stressed. <laughs> No. Well, anyway, guys, uh, it's, I want to say thank you. Every time we do do a show, I always get some wonderful comments. And uh, I may have been a little more frisky in this show than I normally would be. Um, I'm excited because we'll actually be, uh, uh, just a few months from now, getting our hands on our RV and actually RVing again and getting some um, on-the-spot news kind of stuff to do that I'm looking forward to. And, oh, you know, there'll be trials and tribulations. And then I can start bitching about everybody as my neighbor in the RV parks. Uh, but, you know, we tend to be uh, our, we're realists. So we know what, uh, if we get into a situation where the park isn't that good and stuff, you know, we'll pass it on and stuff. But we're not going to dwell on it because our expectation is if we don't like this, we'll go home where we love our home. We love our home with all our hearts, and uh, um, we're grateful. And uh, there's a big story behind you know having a home with me and Sherry, and and uh, uh, we probably never appreciated it more now than all the different homes we owned in the past. Um, but yeah, so um, 
we are looking forward to uh, uh, getting our hands on that, and then we will be showing more stuff in Arizona. Hopefully, we're going to try to crack some crevices that some of the people don't hear about so much um, and uh, get shows going in that, which will make an Outdoor Travel Channel pick up. The, like I said, the cooking won't be on Outdoor Travel Channel anymore. Uh, that's moving over to Cooking with Range Rob. And I urge you, if you would, please, if you have a pet, and you like our channel, and you like what we do, and you like RV Talk Radio, please go to Amazon and buy Ranger Rob Pet Poopy Bags. Um, they're very affordable. Uh, I think right now they're $8.99. Uh, they're under 10 bucks. They're great bags. They are really good bags. I'm, I didn't create some piece of crap. <laughs> well, yeah, well, something to pick up crap. But uh, they're really good bags. And that's why I create them, and, and I was inspired from RVing because of people that didn't pick up, or those cheap bags that they would supply to you in the little dog parks. Um, these have handles; they're big and they're maneuverable, and they're you, you stick a handful in your back pocket. And we have some new ones coming out that are on rolls with a dispenser, and those will be out shortly and within a few months. But um, the bags are the same. That's the cool part. On rolls in a dispenser, and they still have handles and just as large. You will love them. So try some. The bags that are out right now are the same ones that will be on rolls eventually. Get started and go to Amazon or go to uh, the rangerrobshop.com, and you can buy them straight from us. But you have to pay shipping unless you spend over $30 and you get free shipping. And that's kind of how it works. We can't do what Amazon does all the time. Anyway, uh, check them out. Um, we would be grateful if you did and you'd be helping your channel and you're getting a good product in return. And if you want to be a representative of RV, um, of Ranger Rob Pet Poopy Bags, you can. You can start out simple and just... Um, push them on your channel uh, by using an Amazon link or you could literally set up uh, a wholesale thing with us if you wanted to and um, mark them up yourself at a certain price so um, yeah uh, why not I'd do it so Ranger Rob Pet Poopy Bags we'd really appreciate the support um, once again I wanted to take the time to say thank you to the people that send us some very creative notes and very creative comments and uh, uh, some of those guys out there that are all stressed out, my answer to them is go buy a house. Try to keep your RV. Buy a, a base. If anything, get a park model. I just did some shows about uh, park models. What a great way to go. And uh, uh, chill out and quit belly aching so much. <laughs> And that's my job, <laughs> not theirs. There's, they're out there having, supposedly having fun, but they're all complaining. Um, you know, one thing they're talking about is that some towns are not uh, fun, and other ones are um, just wonderfully. And it, it, you know, and that's a true statement. I've been to towns where I'm going, man, this place is laid out weird, like Bend, Oregon. I don't like Bend, Oregon. I'm from Bend, Oregon. Um, uh, I didn't even like Redmond, Oregon that well. The roads were kind of laid out funny. But, uh, you know, you get to other towns, um, you go, boy, this, this place is laid out great. And uh, that's the cool thing about traveling. You can see the differences in these different towns and cities. Sometimes, it's you know, they're uh, at the mercy of the region that they live in, and maybe they're on a hillside like Seattle, um, and uh, Portland, oh, there is a nightmare. It's easier to get into Portland is to get out. I can say that for sure. Uh, Seattle's becoming a dump, and uh, that's sad. And I'm from, I mean, I grew up in Washington. I hate seeing that city sinking the way it is, but it's terrible now. Um, but there's a lot of really cute towns out there. Um, I remember Squim, Washington used to have the highway go right through the middle, and they'd finally put a bypass in, and that's a cute little town. Um, so, yeah, um, that's one of the benefits of, of traveling is you get a chance to see some uh, really cute little towns and cities. And uh, uh, one thing I can say about Phoenix, and I live in Mesa, uh, I love driving around here. It's so easy to get around. The roads are wide. 
Um, the only complaint I would have is hard to see businesses on the side of the road because they're not allowed to do those big honky signs on the outside. They all have to have consistent signs. So you kind of have to know where you're going before you get there because it's hard to see them from the road. Uh, but it actually makes the area look nicer. Uh, but our, you know, we're on a grid system here, and, and uh, I love driving around here so much better than other cities I've been in, even Vegas. Um, I can get around in Vegas pretty good, but uh, uh, they're not as grid out as like Phoenix is. And you can be several cities away and still find the same road that you know would go straight to your house. <laughs> it's amazing. <laughs> I can be in Tempe and find Warner. I can be in Tempe and find similar roads. And if I'm south, I can see uh, crossroads that, um, you know, uh, uh, Higley and some of the famous one, Arizona Avenue. Uh, they go straight through to the other end. They'll cross through three cities. It's amazing. So, yeah. So uh, I have to agree with, uh, I think it was uh, Dan and Jen who were talking about some cities are just, you know, you just don't feel comfortable in them. And sometimes it's just because of history and, and their region is too bad. But uh, some have railroads going through them and stuff. That makes sense. But anyway, have fun traveling out there, people. Uh, don't get stressed out. That's really the message here. So uh, once again, uh, this was episode 117. I want to thank you for listening. Please take the time to subscribe and uh, leave us comments. Uh, we prefer that they're professional comments so we can give you professional answers. So uh, um, anyway, be safe out there. If you don't have an RV, get one. Um, but think it over and really, really find out the facts before you do it. Do some test runs first. And before you decide that this full timing is for you, think again. Uh, look at it closer. Be a, um, be a realist. Anyway, guys, take care. And we'll talk to you next time. Bye now. Thank you for watching our video. Please take the time to like, subscribe, and share our videos all over. Then go down to the description and think about becoming a member of our Patreon. This will allow you to get special content just for you and help us build future content. Thank you.